is Squish for Day Podcast. Three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast or DMGH Podcast. A place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host Chris. Today's episode is as I said going to be about me even though I hate talking about me. So let's get going. So let's start from college. I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University and I studied political science. I always wanted to become an attorney uh, when I was in first grade, my teacher asked us to all draw who we wanted to be. And while all the kids were drawing pictures of Superman and Spider-Man, I was drawing pictures of me behind a desk with a suit because I always wanted to be an attorney. I think that also stemmed from the fact that me and my family, my family and I was um, going through immigration problems for much of my childhood. So I saw attorneys as very much uh, superheroes. And I saw the power they had. As an attorney, you have the power to make your, your client feel comfortable. And that is of so much value. When a client comes to you, their lives many times are in shambles. Of course, there are attorneys that are there for clients during the great times. But many times, as an attorney, you, are, you need to walk clients through a very rough period of their life. And I, when I saw an attorney do that for my family... I was inspired by that. So ever since I went through that, I always wanted to be an attorney. Now, I like I said, I was a political science major at Fairleigh Dickinson University. And my senior year of college, I studied for my LSATs. And I was, I was obsessed with getting a, a good score. I studied pretty much all the time. All the time. I would wake up, have breakfast take a full practice test, go to the gym, come back, eat, and I would do like five, six, seven hours of practice questions. So during that same time studying for my LSATs, I also became obsessed with stocks. Uh, I guess my obsession with stocks started a bit before studying for my LSATs. And every night I would take half an hour to an hour and read books on stocks. Now, the books were... Uh, the Intelligent Investor by um, by Graham. I also read um, the rental the book on rental rental properties by Brandon Turner. I read One Up on Wall Street. Uh, just an endless amount of books. I was just plowing through them, and I became obsessed. So I started to invest in stocks. I raised funds through family and friends, and obviously through my money I had um, from working. And I just dove in and it took, there was definitely a learning curve. It took a little bit of time for me to adjust to see what actually it was like, but I did very well. Uh, one of the, one of my examples, one of my shining examples I use is how I invested in Macy's. I invested in Macy's while the stock plummeted and pretty much every news source was saying steer clear from their stock. But after analyzing the financial statements, uh, their balance sheets, all of which I learned from reading these books. I didn't take classes. I didn't even have mentors in terms of stocks. I invested in Macy's, like I said, after reading all the balance sheets and the financial information that was available publicly. And I saw them as a cash cow. I was very impressed by their financials, even though they're going through a rough time. So I bought low and then within two years, I sold high and I made over 60% of profit on that. So that kind of, that gave me like a certain high, I think, from making money off of stocks. And then my obsession transferred to real estate. Um, I still invest in stocks, but now real estate is my main vehicle in terms of being financially free. And the reason for, for, for that is that rental properties I saw help you supplement your income. And that is what true financial freedom, I think, really is for me 
because I think that gives me the opportunity to retire at an early age, um, the opportunity to at least. And you might not necessarily be able to get that from stocks unless you have um, a lot of starting money to work with. Because with stocks, the only way for you to really make money uh, every month is from either day trading and always be trading or to make money off your dividends. But to make money off your dividends and make enough where you could pay your mortgage, pay for you to basically survive, you have to own a lot of stock. Uh, but I loved starting in stocks because you can invest with almost nothing. If you have $5, find a, find a stock that's at $4 or $5, buy there. Um, it's a lot about hustling with stocks. You can make it no matter how little your income is. Now, uh, so I became obsessed with stocks and uh, studied for my LSATs and got into law school. And I continued with my obsession with stocks and real estate. Now, I started to do more networking in terms of real estate uh, just for me to gain inf uh, knowledge, pretty much it. I didn't have an intention, an intent to start investing in real estate now, mostly because I was scared of starting. I think it could be really scary to start investing, especially in real estate when you're talking about large sums of money. I went to events held uh, by Bigger Pockets. If you don't know what Bigger Pockets is, pause this video or audio and go over to bigger Google Bigger Pockets and also look at stuff that they're doing. It is incredible and a great way to learn. I started going to Bigger Pockets events, reading almost every book they published, and talking to people in my community that invested in real estate. One person especially was Dan. And you guys are gonna talk to Dan on this podcast many times because he has a lot of knowledge to, to give everyone listening, and I'm still learning from him too. But so I became obsessed with real estate. Now, my first year of law school, I was busy 24-7. 24-7, that's it. If I wasn't studying, even while sleeping, I was having nightmares about being cold call or, or missing an assignment or doing something wrong. Uh, for, all you know, for all you out there that don't know what being cold called on is, is pretty much a professor will ask a question and he or she will not care who raises their hand and he'll just pick on you. And a lot of times they stay on you for 20 minutes and they're just trying to get you to, it seems like try to get you to answer the question wrong or in essence, I guess what they're trying to do is to make sure you know the subject matter. And that could be very scary for a law student. So 1L, busy all the time. My 2L, it was a little less busy, but the stress seemed to have doubled. Uh, I got married in my 2L, engaged, married my 2L moved in together with my wife during my 2L. And during my 2L, uh, during my second semester 2L, I purchased my first 14 rental homes. And I know if you're listening, if you don't invest in real estate, you must be thinking, how the heck does a 26-year-old that's 2L in law school with barely any funds buy 14 homes? And that is exactly why I'm starting this podcast. The truth is, is that there is a lot of great ways to learn about uh, um, real estate online, but there is absolutely no reason why you cannot learn um, all this information basically for free. Now, is it important to have a mentor? Yes, I would not have gotten to where I am without a mentor. And if you want to be launched faster, to financial financial freedom you need a mentor but if you just want to learn and kind of before diving in learn more about it especially if you're in law school or in graduate school you very much so want to make sure what you're doing is the right choice because you're probably a type a type of personality so you're not going to just dive in blindly this is why i created the podcast i want to talk about not only my journey in law school and how to get into law school and succeed in law school but also how to become financially free and or at least start that path and figure out what's the right way for you. So I purchased 14 properties and I summered at a big law firm, my 2L summer, loved it. I summered at a corporation, my 1L summer, and loved it. So I really think that I took a, a the right path for me. And I feel that it would be nice to tell people about it and show people that they could do it too, uh, especially when it comes to investing. I never would have thought 
in history that I would have bought in 14 homes before the age of 30. And they're all cash flowing. And each month I'm getting checks from all these properties. It is it was way easier than I thought. It just takes dedication. And more than anything, it takes guts to be able to put money down on 14 homes. And all out of state, I honestly have never physically went to any of the 14 homes I bought to purchase. They're not in New Jersey. And I pretty much don't do anything in, ter uh, in terms of the properties. I don't get phone calls at one in the morning asking me to come over and fix the toilet because the pipes burst. None of that. And so I saw how simple investing in stocks really was and purchasing real estate really was and getting into law school really was. Doing well in law school really was. Not to say law school is easy, but there's ways to do it the right way. And that's why I want to start this podcast. I'm going to have guests on, obviously, that are more knowledgeable than I am even. And we're going to learn together because I'm not at my destination in terms of my life. I'm working towards it. And you have to be learning every day to get, to get closer to your goal. And that's why I'm here. So we're going to talk about my journey, how I bought 14 homes, how you can buy 14 homes, because the way you buy 14 homes is likely different than the way I did. And it's also going to be kind of like an open diary as well. I want everyone to see what it's really like to kind of be in law school and be in these positions. I started from nothing. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. And if you're not from New Jersey, that's not necessarily the um, best financial place to grow up, especially in my area. Uh, but this is, comes to show that if you have dedication and you want to become something, you can do it. So that's it for today. And I really hope that I bring some value to all of you. Even if I reach one person, that's really all I care about. I'm not doing this for any financial reason. I literally just want to do something in terms of making an impact. And even if I reach one person out there that says, I want to be financially free, then I did enough. Or if I help one person get into law school or motivate someone to do it, then perfect. That's honestly all I care about. So yeah. I hope you all subscribe to my Apple podcast channel, my Google Play podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe as well. Like it on all these formats, leave a review. And I am looking forward to this journey. And I hope that you all are too. I'll talk to you guys soon. As always, it's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Peace out.